festivities are in full flow as Christmas is right around the corner and in keeping with the festivities we at News First are broadcasting live and direct from Echelon Square here in Colombo. Good evening, this is Primetime News on TV1. I'm Jamal Ratnaika for the News First team. Let's start off with a look at your headlines. Wild elephant attack in Mahavilachia claims the life of one. Many areas remain at risk of wild elephant attacks. Arrested Swiss Embassy staffer produced before the Colombo Chief Magistrate's Court. Tax on wheat flour reduced. JVP questions government on their stance regarding the MCC agreement. Andwe, Rijuwa, Kelin, Maya Prakasya Kpidiyata Ratanat Kaliyutu Tienawa, Eaitaneta Tenundi Yutu Tien. In our top story for this evening now, the human elephant conflict remains an issue that Sri Lankan authorities have failed to address until today. And the number of lives lost in the conflict remains a stark reminder of the gravity of this particular issue. Now, the latest in this series of incidents was reported from Mahavilachya within the past 48 hours. <laughs> Halandogada area comes under the purview of the Mahavilachya Divisional Secretariat. The biggest issue faced by these villagers living on the edges of the Wilpatu Reserve is the risk of wild elephant attacks that occur both day and night. 51-year-old Priyantha lost his life yesterday after being attacked by a wild elephant. He was killed while he was on his way to earn a day's living to feed his four children. The elephant came through here. Looking at this, it is clear that the animal ran at full speed. It took this bend with the same speed. This is where the man was killed. The victim was an extremely poor man. These children have lost their father. No amount of money can compensate for his life. Even though there is an electric fence around the village, Elephants continue to destroy the fences and encroach on the village. The villagers continue to ask the question, when will this finally be over? Meanwhile, the remains of Madhushan Vikramasinghe, a wildlife officer who died while on duty in Ratgammana Matale, was brought to his residence in Kumbalolua, via in Ratthota. <laughs> Meanwhile, the battle between villagers of Galgamur and the tusker named Chandi continues to disrupt the villagers' day-to-day -day lives. This is the most recent incident in the string of encroachments by the wild elephant. We need a solution to this problem. These elephants have destroyed our crops. We cannot escape this menace. Even though Chandi had been taken to the Horopatana elephant holding ground, he keeps returning to his home in the Galgamo area. While we continue to lose innocent human lives because of the elephant-human conflict, the issue also affects the lives of the wild elephants. This 30-year-old elephant was found dead after being entangled in an unprotected electric wire in Madagiria in Polonnaruwa. <laughs> Meanwhile, the lives of the residents in Septiculum in Vaunia have also been affected by the human-elephant conflict. As a result, these villagers have had to sacrifice a good night's sleep to fend off and escape numerous wild elephant attacks. The Sinna Salaman and the Peria Salaman villagers in Ottuchutan, Mulativu have already found themselves added to the list of villagers at risk of wild elephant attacks. This has been directly attributed to the gross negligence of the officials and relevant departments. This is how resources were brought to construct an electric fence. However, these items continue to collect dust as the constructions of the elephant fence was never completed. President Gotabe Rajapaksa met with heads of media institutions earlier today. During the meeting held at the Presidential Secretariat, the President expressed his views on the future course of action on the MCZ agreement. 
I am of the stance that we should appoint a committee to analyze this even for me to understand what the exact content of this is. We must examine the provisions that are detrimental to the country in the agreement. Member of the media questioned the president on his view regarding the reassessment of the Hambantota port agreement. He said, when considering national security, he is of the stance that all ports should remain under government control. The president also expressed his views on the controversial alleged abduction of the Swiss embassy staffer. He said that he met with the ambassador of Switzerland this morning. The president pointed out that testimonial evidence as well as technical evidence both suggest that no abduction had taken place. The president also said the embassy the alleged victim was employed at had performed their duties properly and that there is no issue with that. Answering a question raised by a journalist, the president said that the devolution of power is a lie and that the majority of the country is against it. He added that he believes national unity should be forged by giving everyone the opportunity to live with honor and through development. The president stated that at the end of four and a half years of the tenure of the parliament, a general election will be held and afterwards a provincial council elections will also be held. The president who said that he is a member of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, that the popular leader of the party, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa, would lead the general election campaign. He pointed out that the general election campaign will be coordinated by Basil Rajapaksa. The president said that there is no agreement with the Sri Lanka Freedom Party on the symbol and as there is only an agreement to form an alliance, discussions on the matter will be held. Now on to a story which garnered much public attention over the past few weeks. The Swiss embassy employee, namely Garnier Bannister Francis, who alleged to have been abducted and threatened, was arrested by the Criminal Investigations Department on the instructions of the Attorney General. Garnier Bannister Francis was present before the CID this morning for the sixth day to provide a statement. After a while, the Swiss Embassy staffer was taken by the CID to the National Institute of Mental Health. She was once again summoned to the CID after she was subject to medical tests for more than four hours at the National Institute of Mental Health. The Attorney General instructed for her arrest, citing her exciting disaffection against the government and fabricating false evidence to be used in a judicial proceeding. Now, State Minister Vasudeva Nanakar expressed these views on the future actions of the government with regard to the Millennium Challenge Cooperation Agreement, addressing a media briefing held in Colombo today. Millennium gives you again. Not yet. We read the MCC agreement when we got a copy and we realized there are real dangers to the nation's sovereignty. Now we are looking to analyze and see if we can remove those things that we deem unhealthy and find some good in it. I don't think we can do it. Now, what is the stance of the JVP regarding the MCC agreement? Now, these were the views voiced by the Propaganda Secretary of the JVP, Vijita Herat, earlier today. Millennium Challenge Corporation. During the last election, speaking with regard to the Millennium Challenge Cooperation Agreement on the political stage, they assured the people that they would throw the compact in the trash without even going through it. So our issue is, during the run-up to the election, did the government make these statements that they will do away with the agreement without even evaluating the MCC agreement? It is very evident that this government is following double standards. The government has to clearly inform the Millennium Challenge Cooperation Institution that they do not want this grant and that they are not ready to sign this agreement. Then the government has to directly make a statement before the people of this country and to the Millennium Challenge Cooperation Institution that they do not intend to sign this agreement. 
Now the 36 rupee tax imposed on wheat flour has been reduced to 8 rupees. Now as a result, the tax imposed on 1 kilo of imported wheat flour has fallen by 28 rupees. The reform has been put into action effective December 14th via an extraordinary gazette issued by Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksa in his capacity as the Minister of Finance. The Consumer Affairs Authority stated that it is in the process of calculating the new maximum retail price of a kilo of wheat flour following the reduction of tax. Meanwhile, the Cabinet of Ministers has also permitted any businessman to import wheat flour to establish a competitive price. The government's move comes in response to the rising price of rice in the market. News first question the Oil Ceylon Baker Owners Association on how the prices of bakery products will be revised following the tax reductions. There will be no change in the price of bread in the country because of this. It will take more than a month for the benefit to go to the people. We expect to be able to reduce the prices of bread to 50 or 55 rupees. Leader of the United National Party, Ranil Vikramasinghe, summoned a group of activists from Kurunagala to the party headquarters of Sirikota. A group of UNP organizers and provincial councillors attended the meeting in Colombo this morning. General Secretary Akila Viraj Karyavasam was also in attendance. At the general election, I feel that if we all get down and work hard, we can get a good result. To do that, we must also work together. If not, we will not win. If there are councillors or organisers who say that they still can't go to the village, they should leave and provide the opportunity to others. We must go to the village, but we cannot do that without the Mahasangha, we cannot do that without the middle class, and we cannot do that without the youth. This is a competition between parties. What we had was a competition between two individuals. We must find solutions to these problems to win back our support. That is the challenge for the party. The former Prime Minister expressed these views on the leadership of the party. The party now needs new faces and a new leadership group. We must be strong by 2025. However, we must not wait until then. We must organize ourselves now. I have always said that I will not be here forever and I have no intention of being here forever either. Give me a plan as a party on how we should move forward and I will work according to that plan. But that plan must be presented together. They can't present plans as separate groups. <laughs> We know very well that time was killed in appointing committees in the recent past. If there is a committee appointed that would not waste time, it would not function for long. We can't be patient. We cannot run for the general election in the same manner we ran for the presidential election. There are several moments in the history of the UNP where a path was created for the leadership to build the party. The Panditaratna Committee and the Srinath Pereira Committee are just two of them. The most recent recommendations presented regarding the reforms to the leadership of the party was included in the Ruan Vijay Vardhana Committee report. Bandulalal Bandarigoda, who functioned as the secretary of the committee, recently expressed the following views. After the local government elections, Ranil Vikramasinghe appointed the Ruan Vijay Vardhana Committee to look into these matters. We convened many times and handed over a comprehensive report to Ranil Vikramasinghe. What is the point of holding more discussions on the same matter when the Ruan Vijay Vardhana Committee recommendations have not been implemented? Leaders of our party will have ample reasons to take a decision according to their conscience, looking at the local government election results and the results of this election. I have a huge problem as to why we should provide more information and recommendations to the people who warmed their seats at the party headquarters in Sirikota while completely discarding the public mandate for 25 years. Why are we continuing to deal with these people like this? <laughs> The Lanka Deepa newspaper reported today that the leader of the United National Party, Ranil Vikramasinghe, had instructed MP Tilak Marapana to inform him of changes that need to be made in the party's constitution on the powers vested with the party leader. The Lanka Deepa newspaper.
newspaper reported that Ranil Vikramasinghe is due to make major amendments to the chapters on the leadership in the party constitution in the near future. This is Ranil Vikramasinghe's theory. Instead of assigning Tilak Marapana to do this, he should have done it himself. They are attempting to weaken the party further and after they pass the point where victory is impossible, they will hand it over to someone and leave. This is their plan. Ranil Vikramasinghe speaks so high of democracy but the UMP is not prepared to appoint a leader who the people want. This is Ranil Vikramasinghe's so-called democracy. Meanwhile, the UNP announced last evening that Sajid Premadasa has been named the prime ministerial candidate in the upcoming general election. This step was taken as part of a recommendation made by the party's restructuring committee. However, the recommendations do not include and mention of the party leadership. Against such a backdrop, MP Ashumara Singha expressed the following views yesterday. In my view, I do not see the party leadership as a factor required for the success in the upcoming general election. What we expect from Sajid Premadasa is to lead the party in the general election. In my view, we can solve all issues then. There is no point in binding the hands of the candidate and fielding him at the election. The candidate must have the ability to form alliances and agreements that would contribute towards his victory. To do that, party leadership is an important and a decisive factor. We cannot fool the people and make foolish statements like Ashumar Singha, and we cannot fool ourselves. Although Ashumar Singha and the rest of his associates want to continue with Ranil Vikram Singha, the general public of this country do not want to continue further with Ranil Vikram Singha. Ranil Vikram Singha we challenge Ashumar Singh to contest the upcoming general election and enter parliament if we can through any party he chooses. Let's see if he can make it in like that. But he can't and the people do not know him. Prior to joining the United National Party, Professor Ashumar Singh was a member of the National Freedom Front. Several views were expressed regarding Professor Ashumar Singh at a media briefing which was convened by the National Freedom Front today. He is the former chairman of the Engineering Corporation. Since he is a member of the UNP, he speaks on behalf of the UNP. We have no issue with that. However, he needs to protect Ranil Vikramasinghe, who is the person who presented him a seat in the parliament through the national list. He needs to do that if he wants to get into the national list once more. <laughs> Pulse at Norochole that generate 300 megawatts each. All three power plants have never been operational simultaneously. The second power plant is completely a white elephant and only 40% of the total 900 megawatts at Norochole has been added to the national grid. It is ironic that the CEB is claiming that the power plants produce cheap energy after only taking into consideration the cost of coal while the Treasury continues to pay back the loan obtained for the construction of the power plant through the funds of the general public. Even today, the ash emitted by the Norochole power plant that is being released to the environment without proper approval being obtained as per the National Environmental Act continues to cause irreversible damage to the environment. Three years ago, we pointed out that the barrier erected to limit the emission of this ash was also a ruse. While the validity of our revelations continue to be established with ever-mounting evidence supporting them, if the newly elected government continues to be deceived by the manipulative tactics of the so-called expert officials at the Ceylon Electricity Board, both the environment and the economy of the country would undoubtedly be at risk. Ashok Patrage has been appointed as the chairman of the national carrier Sri Lankan Airlines. Top businessman Ashok Patirage is the chairman and managing director of the SoftLogic Holdings PLC. Dr. Nalika Godaheva, a member of the committee appointed to make recommendations to key positions in state institutions, confirmed the appointment of Ashok Patirage. Ashok Patirage, speaking to News First, said he assumed duties as the new chairman of Sri Lankan Airlines. Now, tens of thousands of ships sailing the world's oceans burn more than 3 million barrels of sludge like high sulfur fuel every single day. But starting next year, the shipping industry will have to comply with the rules that would dramatically reduce sulfur emissions. 
On January 1, 2020, the International Maritime Organization will enforce new emission standards designed to significantly curb pollution produced by the world's ships. Amid a broader push towards cleaner energy markets, the IMO is set to ban shipping vessels using fuel with a sulfur content higher than 0.5% compared to levels of 3.5% at present. More than 170 countries, including the United States, have signed on to the fuel change. The IMO regulations regarding the global sulfur cap uh, has not been ratified by Sri Lanka as a member of IMO. However, the local authorities through the Director General of Merchant Shipping has already issued instructions for shipping lines and other stakeholders to comply with the IMO 2020 regulations. With effect from January, we are all ready to supply the low sulfur fuel oil that will be required by the vessels. The only issue is that low sulfur fuel oil is much more expensive than the HFO that is currently being used by ships. And as a result, the increase in the cost of between 30 to 40 percent will be passed on to the exporters and importers. As a result of this, the freight rates could go up and the importers and exporters could be affected by that. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations has launched a pioneering initiative named Global Action Fall Army Worm Control that aims to mobilize 500 million US dollars over 2020 and 2022 to fight fall army worm at a global scale. The Global Action aims to establish global coordination on monitoring, reducing associated crop losses and lowering the risk of further spread. The Global Action will target the three regions that have experienced a fall army worm invasion in recent years, Africa, the Near East and Asia. In Sri Lanka, FAO is providing funding and technical assistance to the Department of Agriculture to fill the technical gap in fall army worm control measures, particularly in conducting research on breeding natural enemies, gaps in monitoring and awareness creations. FAO is also working on translating the Fall Army Worm Monitoring and Early Warning System mobile application to local languages in Sri Lanka. On to a developing story from neighboring India, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has appealed for calm as violent protests against a new law on illegal migrants entered a fifth day. Now the Prime Minister said this is the time to maintain peace, unity and brotherhood. After the Indian government passed the Citizenship Amendment Act, protests have erupted all across the country including the Central University here of Jamia Milia Islamia. Matters turned tense on Sunday when protesters and the police clashed. Public property was vandalized and at least three public buses were torched. But students maintained that they had nothing to do with the acts of vandalism. Police then barged into the university campus without any prior permission and allegedly brutalized many students many of whom who claimed that they were not even part of the original protests. Police say that they were forced to act after the crowds turned rowdy and aggressive, but students say that the police used disproportionate force. They entered hostels and the library, baton charged them and even used tear gas, leaving many injured. At least 48 students were detained, all of whom have been released after protests. With camera person Shashi Kanja, this is Mariam Alavi for News First on behalf of NDTV. Christmas is right around the corner and it is also the holiday season. So why not let loose and have a bit of fun and join us at the News First Christmas Zone here at the Etalon Square in Colombo. We have lots of events and activities lined up for every single member of the family. So join us as we celebrate this festive period. And with that, we wrap up tonight's edition of Primetime News on TV1. I'm Jama Ratnaika for the News First team. Take care and good night.